Brennan, Brennan Dassey trial day one, continuation of uh, Kratz uh, interview of Karen Holbach, excuse me, questioning. All right, uh, it's a family picture that our daughter Teresa set up. She didn't take the pictures because she was, she's in it, but she set it up. Uh, timers. Uh, no, my ex-girlfriend took the picture. She snapped it. She just set it up. Can you identify just uh, briefly for us the people in this picture? Um, from left to right in the back row is my husband Tom, and then there's Katie and Kelly, and in the front row is Tim, and then myself, and Mike holding our dog, and Teresa's on the end on the right. All right, Attorney Kratz. With that, and with that offer, Judge, that's all the questions I have of this witness. Thank you. The court. Any objection? Attorney Freeman. No, Judge. The court. All right, they're received. Cross? Attorney Freeman. I just have a few questions. Cross-examination, Attorney Freeman. Prior to November 5, 2005, have you ever heard of the name Brendan Dassey? No, no, I don't think I did. Had Teresa Halbach ever mentioned, Teresa, your daughter, obviously, ever mentioned anything about a Brendan, Brendan Dassey? You mentioned she had mentioned Stephen Avery's name before, correct? Right. Had Brendan's name ever been mentioned by her? No. <clears throat> Attorney Freeman. Okay, nothing else. The court. Any redirect? Attorney Kratz. No, thank you, Judge. The court. You may step down. Attorney Kratz. State will call Katie Halbach to the stand. The clerk. Please raise your right hand. Katie Halbach called as a witness herein, having been first duly sworn, was examined and testified as follows. The clerk. Please be seated. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. The witness. Katie Halbach. H-A-L-B-A-C-H. Direct examination by Attorney Kratz. Hi, Katie. How old are you? I'm 15. Could you tell us, please, who Teresa Halbach was? She's my sister. And was Teresa older or younger than you? She was older than me. How much older? 11 years. Now, some sisters are closer than others. Could you describe how close you were to Teresa and what kinds of things you used to do together? Um, we were pretty close. We would, well, me and my little sister would go over to Teresa's house, sleep over, or we would go shopping or things like that. All right. What kinds of things would you do, would you shop for? Um, clothes mostly. Do you know where Teresa did uh, most of her shopping or was it all over? Um, it was all over pretty much. Teresa ever shop at a department store called Kohl's? Yes, she did. Katie, were you the closest in age, at least a female sibling closest to Teresa? I am. And your other sister is younger, is that correct? Yep. By the way, would you um, do other recreational kinds of things with Teresa? Um, I guess like we would, she would take us to parks and we would go for walks and things like that. Was Teresa involved in coaching any sports? Yes, she coached my little sister's volleyball team. Okay, and would you ever go watch those games or anything? I did. I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 11. Can you tell us what that is, please? This is a picture of the volleyball team that she coached. And who is she? My sister, Teresa. Is she in that picture? Yep, she's in the back row, first person on the left. All right. I think you had mentioned, Katie, that um, after shopping with uh, your sister, um, it wasn't unusual for you guys to buy some clothes together. Is that right? Yep. Had you ever purchased or gone with Teresa uh, and purchased any specific articles of clothing, like jeans or anything like that? We would. As her closest sister, at least closest in age, uh, I know we talked about clothes generally, but you were you aware of the jeans that she owned? I know most of them. Do you know and can you tell the jury, please, what kind of jeans your sister owned? I know of a pair of Daisy Fuentes jeans she had. Okay, let's just start with those. What are Daisy Fuentes jeans? Um, it's a brand name of jeans that is normally found at Kohl's. Okay, how is it that you remember the Daisy Fuentes jeans? Um, one day I noticed that she was wearing them and I told her that Daisy Fuentes was an old person, so she was wearing old people's jeans. Okay, at some point, Katie, had you um, been told that your sister Teresa had been killed? Yes. After um, Teresa's death, were you asked to go to her um, apartment, her residence, and look through some of her clothing? Yes. When you looked through your sister's clothing, were you able to find those Daisy Fuentes jeans that you teased her about? No, I did not. Mr. Wiegertz handed you a pair of, uh, of jeans with an exhibit sticker on them. I think it's a gray or a blue sticker. Can you tell me what exhibit number that is? Exhibit 13. And have you ever seen those jeans before? Yes, I have. What is exhibit number 13? Um, it's a pair of jeans that I picked out at Kohl's one time that I thought were similar to the jeans that Teresa owned. 
Did a law enforcement officer or officers take you on a, a shopping trip and have you find the jeans that your sister used to own? Yes, I went with Mr. Fossbender. Okay, if you can hold up exhibit number 13 and show the jury, please, um, what kind of jeans are those? They are Daisy Fuentes jeans. And are those jeans, uh, at least to the best that you were able to determine, uh, the same or similar jeans that your sister had owned prior to her death on the 31st of October? They are. You know what a rivet is on a jean? Um, I believe it is one of these little buttons that holds the jeans together. Okay, and those rivets on those jeans, do they say anything on them? They say Daisy Fuentes. I'm going to have you give those jeans back to Mr. Wiegert at this time. I'm going to have Mr. Wiegert take them over to the Elmo machine and see if we can show the jury what we're talking about. Just as he's doing that, those little brass buttons or those um, little things, are those the rivets that you were talking about? Yes. When Mr. Wiegert zooms in, it looks like that's as far as it zooms in. The little black lettering that goes around the rivet um, since you've seen it and we have a hard time seeing it. That says Daisy Fuentes, is that right? Yes. Katie, do you know what a lanyard is? I believe it's one of those keychain things you put with your keys that you can wear around your neck. Okay, and do you know if you ever gave your sister Teresa a, a keychain thing, a lanyard for around her neck? I did. Mr. Wiegert is going to have another exhibit marked for you, and we're going to show you, I'm sure, what will be exhibit number 14. Tell the jury what that is, please. It is a blue lanyard that says Air National Guard. Do you recognize as exhibit number 14? Yes, it is the lanyard that I gave Teresa. And do you remember where you got that and where you, when you gave it to Teresa? It was two summers ago. I was at the EAA convention, and there was a booth, and they were giving away free lanyards. Now, that particular lanyard, if you can hold it up for the jury so that they can see what you're talking about, it's got a plastic thing on the end of it. Can you show them that? That plastic end to the lanyard, do you know what that goes into? Um, a fob. All right, and can you tell the jury what a fob is, if you know? Um, it's another piece of cloth, the same color, and then it's connected to a keychain. To help the jury, I'm going to show you exhibit number 12, which is a photograph. Ask if you have seen that before. Yes, it's the same lanyard. And does exhibit number 12, that is the photograph, include the key part of it, that is the fob that clicks in or goes into that particular keychain? It does. Does the keychain and the fob depicted in exhibit number 12 look the same or similar as the keychain and uh, fob or lanyard and fob that you gave to your sister a couple of summers ago? It does. Do you know whether or not your sister ever used that keychain and, and uh, um, that lanyard and fob? She did. How do you know that? Because before I gave her the lanyard, she had a different one, and then I remember her switching them. Okay, Katie, on Sunday nights, did your sister Teresa and you make a habit of watching some television shows together? We did. Where would you guys usually watch those shows together? Either at our house or hers. All right, do you remember the day before she was killed, that is, on the 30th of October, if you and Teresa and your other sister spent that night together and watched those shows together? Um, I believe we were at my grandpa's house for his birthday. All right, you remember that birthday party that night? Yeah. Or that day, at least? Yeah. And the same question that I asked of your mom after the 30th of October, had you ever seen or heard from your sister Teresa? I did not. Last question for you. Um, do you know what kind of soda that uh, your sister Teresa used to drink? Did she have a brand of soda she liked? Uh, yes, she likes cherry sodas a lot. Do you know if she liked wild cherry Pepsi brand soda? She did. That's all I've got, Katie. Thank you. Attorney Kratz. Judge, I would move the admission of... Uh, Berta, I'm sorry, the clerk. Um, Attorney Kratz, 11 through 14, the clerk. 11, 12, and 13, Attorney Kratz, and 14, the court, and 14, the clerk, and 14. Attorney Kratz, 11 through 14, judge, the court. Any objection, counsel? Attorney Fremen, I would like to be heard on 13, the court. Uh, Attorney Fremen, no objection to 11, 12, and 14. The court. Okay, 11, 12, and 14 are received. You want to be heard outside the presence of the jury or here? Attorney Fremen. Uh, at a break, we can take that up. The court. Okay, cross. Attorney Fremen. No, sir. Thank you. The court. All right. You may step down. Attorney Kratz. May we just have a brief sidebar, Judge? The court. Sure. Discussion off the record. Attorney Kratz. State would call Tom Fossbender to the stand. Tom Fossbender called as a witness herein, having been first duly sworn was examined and testified as follows. The clerk, please be seated. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. 
the witness Thomas J. Fassbender, F-A-S-S-B-E-N-D-E-R. Direct examination. Mr. Fassbender, could you tell us how you're employed, please? Yes, I'm a special agent with the Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI. What are your duties with DCI? Uh, currently, I investigate uh, crimes such as homicide uh, or crimes that are of statewide importance in nature, and I'm a part of what we call a General Investigations Bureau. Could you speak up just a little bit? I'd appreciate it. Were you employed in that capacity on November 5 of 2005? Yes, I was. And on November 5 of 2005, uh, were you called to a location which has been come to known as the Avery Salvage property? Yes, sir. How is it that you got called to that location? I was called by my supervisor who uh, informed me that the Calumet County Sheriff had asked for DCI's assistance at that location and it had to do with uh, an investigation into a missing person which was Teresa Halbach. Tell the jury if you would please about what time um, you got to that location. I arrived at uh, that location which was the Avery Salvage Yard just a little after 2 p.m. that afternoon. Tell the jury please what if anything you observed upon your arrival at that salvage yard. When I arrived at the salvage yard, um, salvage yard is located at the end of a road named Avery Road, and at the end of that road, uh, there was a, a law enforcement presence set up there, kind of like, I guess, what you would call a command post, and met with um, members of law enforcement there uh, to include the sheriff of Calumet County. Uh, received a, a real brief, uh, briefing at that time, and uh, subsequently went down into an area known as the, the salvage yard, where the the salvaged vehicles were maintained and there was another uh, law enforcement presence down there, uh, so to speak, like a checkpoint. Um, and it was from that location that I was shown where a vehicle, Teresa's vehicle, had been located. I don't know if you told us, but uh, who also was there when you got there? Well, for certain, uh, the Calumet County Sheriff Jerry Poggle was there and other law enforcement officers to include officers from uh, the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department and Calumet County Sheriff's Department. After your arrival, uh, was there any discussion regarding what role, if any, the Wisconsin Department of Justice would take in the investigation? Yes, uh, as I mentioned, Sheriff Poggle had requested DCI's assistance. Um, with that being said, I learned that um, the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department had requested the Calumet County Sheriff Sheriff's Department to take the lead role in the investigation, and uh, with that, they, Sheriff Poggle, requested DCI's assistance. So in essence, we were there uh, to assist in the investigation, and ultimately, I was asked uh, to join investigator Mark Wiegert as a lead investigator in the investigation. Is it unusual, Agent Fossbender, for DCI to become involved in major crime investigation? No, that's not unusual. After your arrival at the um, scene, um, were you able to survey, if you will, the, uh, the property itself? Yes, and I've handle, handed you or handed to you an exhibit. Can you tell us, I think it's exhibit number 15, tell us what that is, please. This is Exhibit 15, and this is an aerial photograph overview of uh, the Avery Salvage Yard, including residences um, on or around that property. I've had Mr. Wiegert hand you a laser pointer, and actually will be using the large screen to my right, although I'm sure the jurors can see with the smaller screens as well. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to refer to Exhibit Number 15 and show the and describe for the uh, jurors the major landmarks of the Avery Salvage property. As I mentioned before, uh, this road right here, running north and south, is Avery Road. As you come south on Avery Road to this intersection right here, to the west or to your right, if you're going south, is a driveway. Essentially, that goes all the way down to two residences. There's a trailer at the end right down here. That is uh, the residence or the trailer where Stephen Avery resided. Uh, there's an um, unattached garage there also. The residence just to the east of Stephen Avery's residence uh, is the residence of Barbara Taddock, uh, at that time, it's Barbara Yonda, and that uh, is the residence that um, Mr. Das Dassey uh, resided in, Brendan Dassey. Uh, there's an abandoned trailer right there along this driveway going back to the intersection at the end of Avery Road uh, is where the auto salvage business is essentially located, as well as several other or two other residences. Uh, this building right here, this large building, is where the uh, auto salvage office and uh, workshop was located. There's an impound area right in here that has three buildings associated with it. That's an old office, I believe, and shop area. And right here is the residence of uh, Al and Dolores Avery, or Mr. and Mrs. Avery, Stephen Avery's father. Uh, if you go continue south when you get to this intersection, and by the way, this is where that command post would have been set up, that law enforcement presence that I was talking about. 
If you continue south, there's another residence located right in this area, which is Chuck Avery's residence, which would be Stephen Avery's brother. And then continuing south, you go down into what was commonly referred to as the uh, salvage yard or the pit, and that was uh, called that, 